Kawasaki has stood for good times since the beginning. Join in on the action with a great deal on a new Kawasaki during the Good Times sales event happening now. Save up to $2,500 on select vehicles, plus get great finance offers. Kawasaki, let the good times roll. Restrictions may apply, subject to change without notice. Offer available on approved purchases of select new unregistered Kawasaki vehicles. Offer valid for a limited time only. Start your good times at Freedom Power Sports McDonough to save on a new Kawasaki. You guys, hi you guys. This is for Sunday Soul Service. You know I am Minister Dr. Renee Sunday. And you know this is an honor and a privilege to actually be with you. I just want to let you know, before we even do anything, guess what? God loves you. I know you said, no, I think God loves the other person. No, no, no. God loves you. He loves all of us. He, you know, he sent his only begotten son. Just, 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 just concentrate on that just for a minute. Over 2,000 years ago, just for you. Isn't that amazing? That is so powerful. That's amazing. I just, whoo, just saying that, I, you just want to just scream because he loved us before, guess what? And he still does love us. He loves us more than we love ourselves. Isn't that powerful? That's very powerful. Uh, on the Sunday Soul Service, what we do is we actually have so many amazing people chime in that we actually share the goodness of God. We share it on every platform that we own. I mean, <laughs> I know I do. But the thing is, we're going to actually share testimonies. We're going to share um, if you have a question, we can answer that. We're going to actually have prayer. We're going to have some things that we're going to share of how you can be inspired to continue in this walk that we call life because you are predestined already for great things. But we just got to, we got to go through trials and tribulations. That's just part of it. But you can go through it with grace. You can go through it with peace. And you can go through it with joy. And that's only with our Heavenly Father. But let's just start this right on off. We're going to go in prayer, and then we're going to uh, get our awesome, amazing, ooh, I just love her name. <laughs> hey, Lord, I just love it, love it, love it. God know what he's doing, right? And we're going to actually dive into the amazing things that have occurred in our life. And it's going to make you say, have mercy. I need to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But let, let's, let me go in prayer so I get to going there. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. Just thank you for this day. We just thank you, Lord, that life is amazing because we're with you. We just thank you, Lord, that you sent your only begotten son. And we just thank you that you love us more than we love ourselves. We just thank you, Lord, that you are middle of the wheel. Lord, you are bright and morning star. Lord, you just everything. <laughs> we just thank you for that. We just thank you, Lord, that you love us. Even when our mom, when our dad forsake us, you still love us, Lord. Lord, you told us that you would never leave us and you will never forsake us. We just thank you for that. We just thank you, Lord, that you have people around us that actually will empower us, that will motivate us, that we can come closer to you, Lord, that the testimonies, as your word said, will help edify the body, that it will bring people closer to you because, you know, Lord, if you did it once, you will do it again. And the things that you've done for one, you're, you're not, not a respectable person. And we just thank you for that, Lord. Lord, whatever's wrong, make it right in the name of Jesus. Everyone that's listening live and be listening to the archive, we just pray, Lord, for them, Lord. Well, you know what they stand in need. And we just know, Lord, we add our faith to their faith, Lord, that it will be done in your name and your name only. These are the blessings of my son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Seems like, <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. Um, you know, we do this. Uh, let me tell you. Let me step back a little bit because uh, if you hadn't been here in the last month or maybe a month and a half, well, my team is telling me two months, almost three months now. We've kind of changed the format a little bit of Sunday Soul Service. I also have uh, been entrusted with the platform of being the host and the CEO. A uh, visionary of Good Deeds Radio and TV show. What we have done, we have merged it to get. I, no, that's the wrong word. Merge. Uh, God is saying that's the wrong word. We actually kind of have moved the Sunday Soul Service over to our radio show uh, 
dashboard. I guess that's the best word. What that means is the same number. <laughs> if you have one number for our radio show, and uh, it's the same number for our Sunday Soul uh, platform as well. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you lock that number in for the radio show, it'll be the same. We'll still continue on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Now, I have the awesome opportunity of still being your host on the first Tuesday. Now, that may change now, <laughs> but we do have on the second Tuesday, we actually have the awesome and fabulous uh, Alicia Brown, which is the George Groom. She's the host. And we actually have Apostle and Elder. It's a duo marriage couple that actually going to come in on Tuesday and just, you know, just really break down the scripture. That's going to, whatever is pressed on their heart that God thinks that we need to be shared, we will have a, a dialogue of that. And then on the third Tuesday, we actually have the amazing certified life coach, Mr. <clears throat> Bates. And she's going to dive in deep because a lot of times, unfortunate, we do have fear. We have uh concerns with self-esteem and the things we've been through in our childhood and adult that have kind of tried to, you heard what I said, try to hold us back. But you know nothing's going to hold us back because we're going to be around the right people that actually can help us with that. So we're changing that a little bit. And then the fourth Tuesday, we're probably going to end up doing, uh, we've been doing this a good while, I think almost <coughs> two years now, isn't it, I think. But uh, we're going to actually have a blend of our replays of the things that we actually need to bring back to your remembrance of how this can actually help you in life. So if you know anybody that want to do that first, <laughs> be the host of the first uh, Tuesday, let us know. Uh, you know I have my own style, and we, we do allow you to be in your purpose meaning the style that you want to bring to the table. And, of course, uh, my team uh, still supports you. And, of course, we'll allow you to do your branding, and we also allow you to do your unique gift that God has given you. Um, so that's what we're doing. So if you kind of notice some things have changed, some things are changing, of course, with the Sunday Soul Service, but also with the Good Deeds Radio Show as well. But it's all to give people opportunity that they can shine their light to the world. See what I did? <laughs> but we don't want to delay because, ooh, I just, ooh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, but if you want, let me just say this if you want any other information about media coaching, uh, being a part of the Sunday Soul Service, uh, being a uh, part of the Good Deeds Media Network, you know how to get in contact with us. It's www.renee, which is R E N E E Sunday, S U N D A Y dot com. Or, Hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, we we everywhere, LinkedIn, and we'll and we'll give you the information as well. But we don't want to delay. If you have any questions, it's a little different. You can actually hit star one, star three, and star six. All of them actually work. <laughs> so it's a little different than what we have been doing before. But the great thing is we're here to share shine the light, to let people know that God is still in control. He's still doing miracles, signs, and wonders every day of our life. But we actually this evening have an amazing young lady, and I love the word hope. You know, I talk about hope, and I, I, I try to, to instill hope in the people wherever I go by showing the goodness of God. But we actually have a young lady. She has an amazing platform of the things that she's been through. Uh, you know, how we how do we find hope in a midst of darkness. I mean, a lot of things going on in the world now from what's in your own backyard to politics to, to just looking at other people. And other people, guess what? They need that hope. They need that drive to let them know, one, that God is still in control, like I said, but also to give them that inspiration they can continue on in what we call life. But we don't want to delay. We have an awesome, amazing, she's an author, she's a mother, she's a powerful young lady, and she, she, I asked her how she want me to <laughs> introduce her, you know, I love it when people are very humble, and, and they say they don't have, they, they're they not concerned about the title, and I love that. We have Mrs. Halo Matisse, I hope I pronounced it right, she's going to get me right if it's not right. Are you there? <laughs> yes, I am, and beloved Renee, it's Halo Matzel. Matzel. Oh my God! Matt, I'm sorry, I messed up. Like <laughs> no worries, Matt Sal, oh, like it is Matt Sal. They made a mistake on the. Uh, ooh, we got to get that correct before we send it out the replay. I do apologize no for that. Uh, Halo. 
But I think we got it all right on the uh, advertisement, so that that was amazing. Hey, you guys you got to always be able to say you're sorry when you make a mistake. <laughs> but hey, look, you have a dive in deep a little bit because just reviewing your information on, uh, first of all, amazing, amazing uh, website that you have. Oh, Lord, I just love it. And, and and your social media presence is really a true light to help other people to just see how good God is in your life and so many of us. So we thank you, first of all, for that. Yeah, every morning I wake up and I say, God, what do you want me to do with today? And he's such an amazing instructor. And he knows how to infuse my words with his presence. And so to him be all the glory. Wow, I love that. That's a, we, Hey, we need to write that down. The first thing we do in the morning is ask God what he wants us to do, not what we want to do. Oh, It's okay. We all going to get corrected. <laughs> it's okay. We <laughs> brothers and sisters here. But, hey, well, let me ask you this. Tell us a little bit uh, uh, more about yourself because you have a story to tell. As my grandmother used to say, you just really have uh, things that, you know how the old people used to say, you don't look like what you've been through. So share a little bit about that for us. Well, I was, um, backtrack, I was born in Holland in 1964. I came over on a boat. My father is black. My mother is white. We moved to Chicago, from Chicago to Seattle. And I met my husband at the University of Washington. And we had three amazing children. I had four miscarriages, so I say I have four angels waiting for me in heaven. And then at the age of 46, I faced the unthinkable. I heard voices talking in my head, and I thought, no one is going to believe me if I share this. And I told my dad, a retired physician, he said, hey, Lo, you're just a type triple busy A mom. Don't worry about it. But then I had ringing in my ear that got so loud at night that I couldn't sleep. So I went to see my ear, nose, and throat physician. And he said, let's run a dye contrast study on your ear for what I think is a treatable concern. I said, that's great, doctor. I've got so much coming up. I've got things to do. I've got my to-do list. I've got church on Sunday, activities this weekend. It's Friday. Can we get the results right away? So three hours later, I walk back, sit in that waiting room eagerly with working on my to-do list, and the nurse calls me back. And the first indication that something was wrong, she didn't have that smile on her face anymore. And she pulled me back to the examination room, and there were two doctors instead of one. And my doctor compassionately looked me in the eyes, and he said, Halo, this has absolutely nothing to do with your ear. You have a tumor the size of a golf ball lying over the main artery in your brain. You have an appointment with a neurosurgeon on Monday, and my to-do list dropped to the floor. Wow. 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 I mean, so many teachable points in what you just said already. Uh, we as a people, and that's all of us, are so busy, 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 and especially women. I'm sorry, ladies, I'm going to put us under the bus a little bit. Um, we, we, we get so busy with things because we always will nurture We always take care of uh our family, we take care of everybody, the, the doggy, the cat, the bird, everybody mm-hmm. but, but ourselves. But, but hey, well, let me ask you this. Uh, I do commend you for, first of all, me being a physician myself, being an anesthesiologist, that you listen to your body. That's a teachable point there because a lot of times we, you know, we rush in doing this in our business, in church and all these things that, we tend not to even listen to our body. So I do, I know the things you've been through has been so much, but just, just you know, glance your mind just for a minute, ladies and gentlemen, if she didn't listen to what your body was saying. And so when the, so when the physicians told you that, you said the to, your to-do list just dropped to the floor. Wow. And then I remember... Saying, Father God, rain down on me. And I didn't mean R-A-I-N. I meant R-E-I-G-N, R-E-I-G-N. And I walked down the hallway, sat down outside in the curb on the rain. As the rain poured down on me, and my parents came to pick me up because I couldn't drive. 
And I got home and my husband took me by the hand and he walked me upstairs and he said, let's pray. Now I could hardly speak. So I whispered, God, please, something beautiful out of this. And I was reminded of Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has made everything beautiful in his time. And six days later, I'm lying on a gurney, rolling into an operating room, and I refused to say goodbye to my husband, so I said, I'll see you later. And then I'll never forget that loud swish and click of the mechanical door shutting behind me. And I looked at the transfer assistants, and one had me at the head, one at the tail, feet, tail, I'm not a mermaid, at the feet, <laughs> and moved me onto that mm-hmm. operating table. And then my physician, he looked so different than he had, you know, when I saw him first, because now he had all the blue mechanical garb on and a light on his head. And he said, and all the, the machinery, the loud noises, and I was being poked and prodded and connected. And he said, I'll take care of you, beautiful likely because he just shaved off half the hair of my head. And I remember looking at him and I said, thank you. And I whispered, I love you, Rich, Lauren, Jordan, Austin. And the last thing I remember whispering was, I love you, God. Mm. And my projected stay was six days. And I was supposed to return home to two weeks of tender loving care. But that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Let let me ask a question because I think a lot of uh, this is a shareable moment. Uh, If we step back just a hair, again, Mm -hmm. and I may say this a lot because this is my word that I like to commend people. I like to show people their flowers why they can hear and and, and, and then see them, of course. I, you actually kept the faith because uh, this it, it is really, you know, uh, a difficult situation to, to hear and to be, uh, you know, have to have them shave your hair, and then now you have to have, a major, you know, major surgery. I mean, just a major surgery. Uh, touch on that a little bit because I know – and I said it a little bit when I was starting out that we all go through trials and tribulations. But and I don't want to categorize them because I know it's no you can't. But having brain surgery and and, and having a, a a cancer, people actually, if you ask, uh, I forgot the name of that scale, but if you, I think it's a, a stressful scale, I forgot um, what they call it that we learned in medical school. But actually, having cancer and divorce. And someone passing away is 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 really tight for one, two, and three position. So speak on that a little bit because I think we as Christians we see it in somebody else, but you going through that, how did you keep the faith? I would say that you know faith is not always easy, and letting go and letting God takes a heart of humbleness on our part. When God says, "Child," Will you trust me? And then we throw up our arms and say, why me? Why this? Why now? Child, will you trust me? And, you know, Satan, the rascal, the enemy, he he delights in pulling down those who seek hope. And worry makes us vulnerable to the enemy. And he wants us to focus upon defeat as the battle begins. And I'll admit, my diagnosis turned my world upside down. But I could choose to seek hope. Or give up. And if I gave up, Satan was going to nurture my fearful thoughts. He wanted me to panic. He wanted me to cry out in angry desperation and wonder where God was in all of it. And I had moments when, I'll admit I had moments when I allowed Satan in, as I doubted God. And there were times I convinced myself that I'd totally failed my Heavenly Father by not trusting him. But when I did put my trust in him, and I found safety. You know, Psalm 91, 2 instructs God's children well. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him, I will trust. And so in my fear, I, 
I leapt more into preparation mode rather than preoccupation mode. But I wasn't afraid of where I would go given the severity of where the tumor was located in my brain. It was one that my neurosurgeon had never seen before, one in two million. And I had to sign the disclosure. It was frightening that I could potentially die. And I wasn't worried about where I was going to go. I knew that heaven was waiting for me, and one day I'd be dancing with Jesus. I was afraid of who would be the loving wife to my husband and the mother to my children. And like I said before, my projected stay was just six days, and I I focused on that. I was supposed to come home to two weeks of tender, loving care. I mean, what mother wouldn't want a little role reversal for a little while? But my tumor had a nasty trait. You touch it, it's like touching poison ivy. So when the doctors went in to extract it, my brain swelled, and I slipped into a coma. And I was on life support for three weeks. Five weeks inpatient rehabilitation, learning how to walk, talk, eat, think, do virtually everything over again. And then defying medical odds, I return home to a 20-week rehabilitative challenge, still sleeping 19 hours a day. But miracles still happen, and miracles unfolded when I was in the hospital. Mm-mm. Wow. Oh, Lord, I just have chills all over my <laughs> Me too. <laughs> one of the oh, miracles wow. that happened, you know, mm-hmm. one of the miracles that happened, um, and you would know this being in the medical field, but if my pupil dilated, it meant I was going into brain herniation, which is much like a heart attack, only the brain under attack, and I've got less than a minute and a half to live. My dad, the retired physician, at random, opens my eyelids. My pupil's actively dilating. He sounds an alarm bell. He's shoved out of the way. No father ever wants to see his child like that. He's holding back tears. They slap my body between two plastofabric sheets of ice from head to toe for three solid days to induce hypothermia. I now have 80 wires and tubes sustaining my life. My husband would gently move the wires and tubes and tenderly give me a kiss on the cheek. I didn't respond. And one day, my mom came in. Hi, Halo, I love you. Through tears, four times over, hi, Halo, I love you. Then crying in desperation, hi, Halo, I love you. God loves you too. I lifted my hand a quarter inch off the bed. Turn it, it dropped. It was my weak wave, and my family was excited. Static. Days later, I'm intubated at the time, and I motion to my sister-in-law that I want to write something. It is my first communication after life support. She holds on to a yellow pad, hands me a pen. It takes me five minutes, and I write, God is amazing. <laughs> wow. Mm. And I've often been asked wow. if I've had a near-death experience, and I call it near heaven, mm-hmm. likely because of things that have happened to me since I've been back. I was uh, not allowed to drive for 18 months. And I would always tell myself, well, hope cannot be caged. <laughs> and one day <laughs> after working with a driving instructor for five hours, I said, you can drive now. Well, that's great. So my husband handed me the key. He said, well, aren't you going to come with me? I said, no, you you go. I got in that car, and I drove only two miles away. But I am looking at God's creation. I'm paying attention to where I'm going. Don't get me wrong. But I'm looking at the trees, the leaves, how it blows through the wind, and people walking and dogs running around. Like, Father God, your creation is amazing. And I get to the grocery store, and I sat there, and all of a sudden it hit me yet once again that miracles still happen and how real God is. 
So I start crying and praying at the same time, God, will I grow old enough to meet my grandkids? See, I was afraid. But I chose, I've got to put my trust in God. Will I grow old enough to meet my grandkids? I walk through the grocery store and I'm crying. My face is looking a bit like raccoon. I really, it doesn't matter. I don't care. And I, but I physically bump into a woman <laughs> at the Tostito section. She mm-hmm. looks at me and she says, honey, can I pray for you? And I look at her and I'm like, no, it's okay. No, honey, I need to pray for you. Her husband looks at her and says, do uh, you got ministry to do? She says, no, I've got praying to do. She says, go get me some more yogurt. I look at the cart and it's full. I say, why on earth do you need more yogurt? Honey, we're in the chip section. I send my husband over to the yogurt section. You and I have more time together. So off he goes. <laughs> and she says to me, tell me what's going on. So I shared my story, the brain tumor, eight weeks hospitalization, life support, miracles, 20 weeks rehab, and this is the first day I was allowed to drive, 18 months later. And my fear Mm -hmm. of growing old to meet my grandkids. She looks at me, straight in the eyes, clasps me by the hand. She says, I understand. You see, I'm 72 years old, and 35 years ago, I had a tumor on my carotid artery. Granted, mine was in my neck not my brain. Wow. But I understand your fear. And today, I've got 14 grandchildren. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. It is not, it is not, it is not as if Jesus is saying, okay, Halo, you outline your prayer. I'll give you precisely as you ask. That's not how he works. But when we pray, knowing that our prayers our Holy Spirit immersed, and we're just giving it all up and trusting God with our every portion, and we can pray and then let it go. We will be astounded time and time again at how he answers. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Wow. That That is just so powerful. Um I, I, I'm kind of have a, a, a big grin on my face, and, and, and the audience so they, they know, because I, I I've had, uh, you know, what the old people used to say. I'm trying to put it into words. Um, you don't know when he's gonna come, but he's always on time in situations. I mean, he loves you so that he already had pre orchestrated that lady to be at that grocery store at that time and her and, and we gotta be real, her husband understands that people are not all around you guys. You could actually have a conversation and that's the very conversation that you needed, Halo. God I know. I know. And you know, in today's world, when you open this whole, you know, conversation with everything that's going on this, in this world, you know, I stop and focus on John sixteen thirty three. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. There are times when all of us, as God's children, although we profess to have faith and we profess to believe, let's get real here. We sometimes do doubt. Mm-hmm. And there's a part, there's a conversation that I wrote in the book titled Halo Found Hope. And I was going to share with you. I, And this is another one. Oftentimes when I write, God, what do you want me to write? And it's a conversation between me and God. And I write, God, why do you love me? Because I am love. God, when do you love me? Always. How do you love me? With grace, patience, and forgiveness. God, am I good enough for you? My precious child, you don't need to be. Why? Because I love you so much that I gave my one and only son, and he took upon his shoulders the afflictions and sins of this world. God, when will I get to see you? after you choose to believe in me. Then I will know you here and in heaven? Yes. Then you will know me here and in heaven. I love you, God. He always replies, I loved you yesterday. I love you today. 
and I will love you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Lord have mercy. That is just so powerful. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know with the advertisement that you look at the beautiful picture of Halo. She's a beautiful young lady. But you can actually, just looking at her eyes and her beautiful smile, it's just an assurance that's there that you can't even explain. And you can't explain it because it's the glory of God that's all over her. It's, and and, it, and I'm, I have to go back to your name. Your parents, they did a great job. <laughs> I'm giving you <laughs> the name Halo. Oh, my God, because... Because, ooh, you just exemplify the, the, the grace and the love that, of God that he has for his people. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And this is all about what God can do, not Halo. But That's right. That, that's right. Woo, that's it. He is so that, real. That's it. He is so real. He is so real. Mm. And, and well, let me moment. ask you this. Oh, go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. No, that's okay. I we're going to keep going. I was no, just going to say, say you know, uh huh. You know, I've had moments when I felt like quitting. And then I tell myself, okay, Halo, if you want to quit, by the grace of God, quit giving up. And that's my <laughs> prayer for everyone listening. Mm. Wow. That, that's actually what, that's uh, similar to the questions I was going to ask because a lot of people. I mean, you know, just keep it real, like the kid says, keep it 100. Um, you know, I think Joe Osteen said at one time that we will ask questions to God. But the key is <laughs> when we ask that question, you know, don't let it get in your heart that you get, you have doubt, you have unbelief, that you end up making this something that could separate you from the love of God, which we know nothing will. But the thing about it is the devil is very clever. That's what I'm getting at. He's very clever. Oh, yeah. He loves to affect, especially our family. So I know your family, uh, that was a very trying time for your family, and, and, and you can see evidence, the manifestation of how, he bought you out of a difficult situation. <laughs> yeah. And I, I felt bad for my family that they had to see me. There would be one day when I would actually see the image of me on life support. My brother had been praying and asking for one-on-one time with me before he came to visit. But every other time there was always a nurse or physician in the room. But this time there wasn't. So he stood back and took a picture of me. And he told no one about it, not even his wife. And about eight months after I came home, I was talking to him on the phone. I said, what I wouldn't give to see what you and the rest of the family had to see. And then he told me about that picture he took, and he showed it to me. And it took my dad about an hour and a half to describe the purpose behind every wire and tube. And I remember looking at that picture and telling my husband, I go, that looks nothing like me. He said, actually, Mm -hmm. it's exactly what you look like. Because when the machines deflated your lungs and then pumped them back up, when they, your chest would rise and then sink and then rise and then sink, and when it sank, that's exactly what you look like. Wow, wow. L- ladies and gentlemen, I, w- I want to actually bring this point out, which is a great angle of how God orchestrated us having this actual broadcast. Um, you, you know I've been practicing anesthesia for 16 years. I actually also have a, a certification that I'm a uh, critical care. I took an extra year of critical care medicine. So people, you know, it's so interesting the things that Halo has been through. I can just, because uh, I, I I worked a whole year straight in the, in the intensive care unit, the ICU. We, as physicians, we do have to put, a lot of devices that uh, Halo has referred to, you know, to monitor the blood pressure, to give IV fluids, to mm-hmm. give certain medications we, we have to give. But, you know, one thing I always uh, treasure in my own career, and, and, and it sounds like it's coming out amazingly of how Halo is, is telling us her life story, is the compassion of the physician. Uh, a lot of times... Um, 
sometimes patients see it and family and sometimes they don't. But a majority of the uh, physicians, and I'm going to say all because that's just the way I believe it, that all people do things, uh, you know, good things. That we, you know, we want the well-being of our patients. We want uh, to, to, to them to survive, and, and and because we're part of God's healing process. That that's what I. I just, mm-hmm. But the point I want to get at saying that I when I work in the intensive care unit, I've always had pride of making sure I made sure my patients uh, was you know was clean, that they were covered, they'd actually that their family was taken care of. And you see the things that I do with my nonprofit organization uh, emulates from that because we, we make sure that the uh, families of the ICU are taken care of, when, you know, because the thing about it is, this is what I want to get to. When I actually was, um, had a real bad car accident in 85, I could hear wow. people talking to me. And, and that's my question I want to ask you, Hayla, if you remember I remember my family talking to me. I remember my family trying to wake me up. I remember all of that. And so, like the statement that you said, I can relate to what you're saying, that I didn't want my family to go through all of what they went through of seeing me, you know, sick. And I treasure that with my patient's family that I come in contact on a daily basis. But, but Hayla, do you remember any of the experience when you were in the intensive care unit? I would have to say that I don't absolutely remember my family talking to me. However, my dad uh, is a physician and used to be a hospice care physician and also worked, you know, in urgent and in, in um, ICU units he would continually tell my family to talk to me. And the mm-hmm. fact that when my mom came in and said, hi, Halo, I love you, and God loves you too, and I responded by lifting my hand and turning it and dropping it, I heard what they were saying. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know, um, and, uh, and, and that's and my I know, experience I, with that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my, you know, my father, the physician, you know, trying so hard to do so much for his daughter, watching me on life support. At one point, um, he put pillows under my Achilles tendon, and he told the neurosurgeon, I need pillows under Halo's Achilles tendon because when she gets up and walks again, I need to make sure they haven't shortened so she won't have to go through rehab for that. And, you know, my neurosurgeon put my hands on my dad's shoulders, compassionately looked him directly in the eye, said, you know, I, I care for your daughter as if she was my own. But frankly, I don't give a you-know-what about your daughter's Achilles. I am trying to keep her alive. Yeah. And in that moment, my neurosurgeon was showing his own, his own um, frailty mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. situation because he's just a human being and he's watching another human being on life support. That's right. And that's, that's when right. my parents and family would call God in because my oh, doctors yeah. thought, this girl is not going to come out of this alive. I actually had a cold blue call on me one night because I had a lung collapse. Oh, wow. And, okay. You know, no one, yeah, the lung collapsed, and my parents and husband were at home at the time, but it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and my parents and husband were on shifts to come see me. Um, for weeks and it was the first day that my husband said I just need a night of sleep outside of the hospital so we went home and that's the night that a code blue was called Mm. but miracles kept unfolding and they keep unfolding today (laughs) and I have people say to me well that's great you had this miracle but what about me you know what about my miracle that's right and and to them I say you know what if I were sitting across from you right now beloved child I would look at you and I would say you are fearfully, fearfully and intricately made and I am looking at a miracle right now. Wow. That's, that's so powerful. Oh, Lord. Mm. You know, we, we fail to realize how amazing uh, we, we are made. I mean, because think about it. Let's, let's just be, you know, when we go to sleep this evening, I'll, we don't wake up every second or every minute and say breathe. <laughs> See how amazing God yeah, coordinated that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
And we don't tell our liver to break down whatever it needs to or our kidney. We we, we, we don't we don't do that. But, but, no, but we Paul, don't. you pointed out something that, that needs to let's talk a little bit more about that because I know God has established a a major platform for you to be able to share with other people uh, of hope. I want to ask you this because, you know, hope is one of those words that we use, uh, I just say we use a lot, like we say love. Tell us what you, what is your definition of what we should think about when someone says hope. But then I want you to, after you do that, tell us how we should be helping other people have hope and show love that God has actually shown each of us every second of the day. <laughs> hope is an all-inclusive word. I I think that when we find hope in Jesus, um, searching for it stops. Because he is our hope. You know, and it was interesting because on the cover of my book, um, titled Halo, Found Hope, and Chip Kitty, designer likes the Jurassic Park and Batman book covers, he asked me to write the word hope out in different mediums. And I spent a January 1st all day with the music in the background writing out hope. And I think I wrote hope 100 times. And then on the title, it's this Halo Found is a black line and filled it in with the word hope. And throughout my journey, I will admit, I filled in that black line with other things. Frustration, discouragement, doubt. And God helped me turn that into courage and determination and faith and believing. And I believe that hope is a connection to God. When we're facing so much adversity, when we feel like giving up, when we feel like, okay, this is enough. Hope is that tangible soul tug, that tangible soul tug that pulls us towards our Father. And we know then that he is love and he is always, always present. And I will often, you know, pray a prayer like this one when I feel hopeless or not loved or not good enough. And I put my hope in God and then I'll pray something like, Dear God, help me make today all about you. Your love, your peace, your presence, your power, your healing, your compassion, and your authenticity. Father God, you are real. Sometimes this world distracts me from you and makes me fall to my knees. Yeah, I need you to forgive me for the moments when I find it hard to trust you with my all. I mean, I'm thankful I get to be your child and call you Abba Father. But when my storms hit, I need you to splash my soul with your presence, your love, your hope, your grace. And I need to thank you for cradling and hugging me, even during the most tender, raw, or heart-draining moments when my arms are stretched out, begging for mercy and comfort, because I feel like I cannot go on. And I need to thank you for being my refuge. And I need to thank you for loving me, even when I hide behind my smile. And I need to thank you for loving me like no one else can. I need to thank you for being my hope my grace, my peace. So I just say then help me jump into your loving presence so that I can see that I'm worthy, wanted, and loved. And remind me to tell you every morning, every afternoon, and before I go to bed, I love you, God. I love you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's so powerful. Wow. You know, I have to say this. This is way, way, way off the record. Halo, you have a very nice voice. Uh, have Have you ever done voiceover or audiobook? Because you have an amazing voice. 
I've been told that I should do an audio version of Halo Found Hope. I'm currently also working on writing another book, a devotional, which I'm really excited about. It's so fun to have, you know, I get writing on it and typing at the keyboard, God, what do you want me to type? And it, it just flows. I, I, he's so good at it. Um, mm-hmm. No, I haven't done an audio book yet. Um, I've been asked to run a Bible study or <laughs> something. I just, you know, I'm one person trying to do so much, but God is capable. Um, and I, so I haven't yet. I That's will right. share this. That's right. I will share this. I was um, sitting at the piano one day, banging the keys in frustration. And you would know this as a physician, but with brain trauma, what happened with me is I had this new normal when I first came home after eight weeks in the hospital. And I, I had double contorted vision, so I'd see two of everything, one contorted off to the right. I told my husband I got one that gets to dote and flirt and one gets to clean house. And he says, I'll be dote and flirter every day. <laughs> But I was sitting at the piano, and my dad was sitting with me. And I used to know how to play Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata by heart. And I'd look at that F sharp, and I'd say, okay, all right. I can see it on the piano. I can see it on the the music. But my brain was not communicating with my fingers. So my hands couldn't play the keys. And Mm -hmm. I got so frustrated. And once again, Father God, rain down on me. Help me. And I ended up writing a song, and never written one again, and it's titled, I Can See You, Jesus. It's, I can see you, Jesus, and I know that you'll never, never leave my side. Mm-hmm. And part of it, the chorus goes, angels, hold on tight. Tell me everything will be all right. Tell me if I stay or when I go, God has my soul. And I've learned so much that mm-hmm. there are silver linings in every adversity if they just say, Father God, show them. I don't, you know, we don't, may not see them all right away, but he does make everything beautiful in his time. And my husband and I in our marriage, we have one beautiful silver lining that often evokes laughter, but it's okay. Mm-mm. Wow, that's so, ooh, Lord, Lord. You you know, so, wow. So you've written a song and everything. <laughs> you just so amazing. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, wow, wow. Let's, let's do this because um, God is pulling on my spirit to actually do something, but let's do this first. With the, tell us how we actually can um, get in contact with you to get your products. Uh, and services and how we can, you know, book you to be on one of, you know, another platform speaking or come speaking to our church groups and stuff. Tell us how we can can do that. Okay. Yeah, and I love, love, love to speak and share hope with others. Um, I've been told I had a, have a gift at captivating the crowd. I Apparently I can draw out contemplation and laughter and tears and just moments of reflection. And I recently spoke in front of a crowd of 3,000. And I remember right before I got up on stage, someone asked me, are you afraid? I said, I'm afraid of nothing when I remember that God can handle everything. Now, if I forget that, I'm afraid, but no. And it was an amazing talk. But I look at it as all what Jesus can do, not what Halo can do. And the best way to contact me, um, there are a couple of ways, but you can go to my website, at halofoundhope.com and it's h a l o f o u n d hope h o p e dot com all one word halofoundhope.com. There you can follow me on Facebook. You can message me there. I launched the Facebook author page and now a public figure page to, about two years ago, and I have twenty two thousand people following me. Um, I do receive anywhere from fifty to seventy five messages a day private messages, so I try to get back to all of them. So I have an automatic message that goes out, but I do faithfully read through them every day and respond. So if you get an automated message, please accept my apologies in advance. Um, the real live me will, will um, respond. Um, I would love the opportunity to speak in front of churches or women um, groups and, um, and for physicians. Um, I've been working with the American Physical Therapy Association and other venues. I'm actually going to be speaking um, for an Army chaplain faith group. Um, and it's, you know, God's taking us places. 
And again, it's all about what he can do, not Halo. But I'm excited to see what he wants me to do today and tomorrow. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, Lo, say that one more time, because I think I, 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 that has to resonate with me, actually. Right before you gave your website, you said, when the lady, when they said you were going to speak in front of the 3,000, you said that. She asked, asked me if I was. I, I like, she asked me, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, she asked me, are you afraid? And I looked at her and I said, I'm afraid of nothing. When I remember that God can handle everything. And if I start becoming afraid again, then, yeah, I, I, I worry. I become nervous. Wow. But I am afraid of nothing when I remember mm-hmm. that God can handle everything. Wow. I like that. Because that's so, that's so true. But, you know, because sometimes, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just bubbly all the time. But I, I, I can be yes, honest you are. here, ladies and gentlemen. Some, sometimes... Let, let me see something. That, oh, well, I can. Oh, I got a prime example. Today, my mom had to have a procedure. I got my prayer warriors, the people close to me, to pray, and then you know, of course, we pray. And you know, I, I do anesthesia every day. And when we went to the recovery room, it took a while for the doctor to come to give us a report. I mean, really. Mm-hmm. I, and I'm like, okay, please hurry up. <laughs> And the damn was trying yeah. to get me, hey, Lord, ladies and gentlemen, saying, well, he's taking a long time because he's calling another doctor or he's doing this and this. But I'm looking at my mom. She's talking. She's moving around. She's doing everything. Mm-hmm. And right then I had to say, Satan, get back. Leave me alone. I said that, you know, I quoted my favorite scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord and lean not to my own understanding mm-hmm. and all that ways mm-hmm. acknowledge him and he would drink that path. So when you said that, that actually made, I had chills and I had to hear that again right then. I know I'll go back on the on the replay, but I'm like, <laughs> hmm, that's another thing that I can add to my repertoire that from you, Halo, that you have inspired me personally. I know a lot of other people can attest to that as well. Wow. Okay, I got that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, well, Halo, do me a favor. I know this time goes by so quickly. If we miss anything, please share that. But if you don't mind, because you already prayed with us so nicely, if you don't mind, can you um, – Say anything that we may have missed or something you want to reiterate. And then, if you don't mind, can you please, please pray us out? Absolutely. I um, want to say that, this, first of all, this conversation it has been amazing. I have so enjoyed talking with you. And I have a feeling it won't be the last time we talk. And um, would love to have another conversation privately with you over, over the phone sometime. Um, yes, yes. But God, God is so real. And, you know, it wasn't too long ago that I actually was, I, I went to go bring one of my physicians a copy of Halo Found Hope, and I tripped over a purse in the waiting room. And it was a mother and daughter sitting there. The mother was wheelchair bound. And out popped my book. I was so tired. <laughs> out popped the book. And the daughter looks at me. She goes, what's that about? I said, I'm so tired. Just read the back. So she started reading the back of the book, and she said, can I, can I look inside? I said, sure. I had a feeling this book wasn't going to make it into my doctor's hand. And she goes, can I, can I open it? And so she did, and she looked at the table of contents, and she got to Chapter 8, and she looked at her mother and said, Mom, Mom, Halo wrote Chapter 8 for you. And her mom was grumbling, mm-hmm. oh, stop it. You know, no, she didn't. And I'm tired, and I'm tired of you having to take care of me. I'm tired, of you, and I want to do something fun. And she was so grumpy. I didn't want to get in the middle of it. So I, I just said, here, take it. And I signed their names, and two days later they called me. And the daughter said, i got to tell you something. This is the first time that my mom and I have laughed and cried and prayed together. She wants to get to know who Jesus is. How much is it? And I came away from that reminder once again of how much we just all need God. I mean, I've met plenty of people who think they don't, but no one who doesn't need him. And my favorite review on Halo Found Hope was, 
Christian readers will find in these pages a powerful testament to the power of faith in dark times. And even agnostics will be uplifted by the joy de vivre of this remarkable woman, Kirkus Reviews. And I remember asking them, well, can we change the remarkable woman to remarkable Jesus because it's not about Halo. That's just who I am. But I would mm-hmm. encourage, I would encourage, encourage your listeners or anyone who ever feels hopeless or knows of someone who needs a little bit of hope because a little bit of hope can go a long way. You know, to get a copy or to message me or to follow me on Facebook um, because I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear from you. And then I'd tell you all, remember to pray. Pray because God listens and pray because he's just a prayer away. He's not far. So, Father God, I ask you in humbleness and knowing how real you are, that you would hold on to the hearts and minds of everyone listening, of everyone who feels helpless at times, that they would know that no matter what they're going through and no matter who they are, that you love them, that you are real, always present, always powerful, always loving. You are our king. Help us always remember that. Remind us that hope begins with a prayer. Hold on to us tight and don't let go until we meet again. We love you, God. Amen. Ooh, Lord. Amen. Amen. Ooh, Halo, you're right. I, I, you know, and in my spirit, you know, this is only the beginning for you because our spirits are just so jumping for joy right now because I can, mm-hmm. I can literally, and, I, and I'm saying literally, feel your humbleness and your meekness, um, wow, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Because mm-hmm. I'm similar to you. I don't like to take, I don't, I really don't like people giving me credit for anything. It's it's all because of God, what he's entrusted me to do, and I can't do nothing without him. I can't either. I mean, I don't know how And, and none try. of us can. Yeah, yeah. None of us can, but we need no. to acknowledge that. Oh, God. But you know what? If um, if you need us for anything, please, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, let me ask you this, and this is, um, you can just, what state are you in? I'm in uh, Washington, and just outside of Seattle in a city called Redmond. Where, okay. And you are okay. in... I'm in Atlanta, Where Georgia. So we could, so I'm gonna have to come visit out that way. <laughs> oh, you have a place to stay if you ever come visit. Oh, she's so sweet, you bless her heart. To, you, have place, <laughs> you have a place to stay. You have a place to stay. Oh, thank you. And, and likewise, if you come this way, Atlanta is a busy place, so it'll be we'll have a good time together, you and your family. But if you know, thank you so much for for taking time out and being with us here on Sunday Soul Service. I've learned so much. God has ministered so much to, to me and I know to our listening audience as well. And, and, and God bless you. And, if you know, again, I'll say it again. If you need anything from us, don't hesitate to give us a call. Oh, I'll, I'll absolutely call you. And, you know, again, I would love to talk again. I've got a few funny stories to share and God gives us a sense of humor for a reason. So if not now, another time, you know, definitely share that. But, <laughs> All right. Okay. All now right. I've got your attention. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, would you like me to gonna... share it or it's... wait? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. We got some time. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So I, my husband and I have been beautifully married for 28 years. Praise God. God is such a good, amazing matchmaker. And when I wrote. Um, the book, there's a chapter called Into the Hands of God, where I actually described in layman's terms the actual surgery itself, but I didn't want to scare off the reader. And so I met with my neurosurgeon, 
so he could help me put it into layman's terms. Now, the side story to this is that before brain surgery, as a busy wife and mom, and all you ladies can probably understand this, but as a busy wife and mom, when it came to intimacy, it was always me saying, not this morning, not this afternoon, not tonight, honey, I'm tired. After brain surgery, I would forget when we had been intimate not to insult my husband's talent or love, but I had no idea we'd just been together. And it could have been three minutes, three hours, or three days ago. So we go to meet my neurosurgeon to write, help, have him help me write the chapter into the hands of God. And when we're done, my husband pulls the good doctor aside and he looks at me. My husband looks at me and says, Halo, I love you, but I need you to stay right there. Stay in your corner, girl. Stay right there. Doctor, come here. We need to talk. I don't know what flip you switched in my wife's brain. But when it comes to intimacy, it's now me saying, not this morning, not this afternoon, not tonight. She's running me ragged. And the doctor <laughs> high-fived him and said, nice problem to have, young man. And I whispered, I'm not letting him back into my brain to fix it. Now, my kids are mortified. Mom, did you really have to put that in the book? And he said, you know what, in today's world, yeah. Because God, mm -hmm. he created intimacy, and it's beautiful when it's for his purpose and his glory. And we understand that's who right. comes. So, yes, I that's do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then you can understand this as an anesthesiologist. I, well, I came off anesthesia, right? And after being in the hospital for eight weeks, the nurses looked at my husband. We were right by the nurse's station. And I don't know, I'm being vulnerable on this one. But it, it was cute because they said, the room's all yours. So I looked at my husband. My husband came in. He goes, the room's all ours. I go, that's great. You want to get it on? And he looked at me and he goes, honey, the bed's too small. I go, how long has it been? He said, eight weeks. I go, it shouldn't take that long. Three seconds later, honey, you want to get it on? And I had no idea what had just happened. So my husband goes to the nurse's station. He's like, <clears throat> Thank you for letting me know that the room's all ours, but now I need a nurse on in the room, stat, at all times, because my wife is driving me crazy, because if I leave, she wants to know where I'm going. And if I'm there, she wants to get it on. So they laughed, and they ended up putting a nurse on stat in the room. So laughter is good medicine, you know. God oh, yeah, it is. It, it is, ladies and gentlemen. Laughter is good. Oh, hey, Lo, thank you so much for being here with us. I, we love you, love you, love you. Oh, but God well, loves you. Well, now I'm best. blushing. Now, yeah, book. now I'm blushing. I'm blushing. I'm blushing. Okay. Well, that's Oh, good. no. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, thank you so much. And we'll be in touch. But thank you so much for being here with us on the Sunday Soul Service. Thank you so much for having me on Sunday Soul Service. And God bless you. God bless you. Woo, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see you next time now. We love you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Sunday Soul Service, brought to you by me, Dr. Renee Sunday, the Platform Builder. Tune in every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for an uplifting Power Pack Hour designed to help you believe, trust, and walk it out. And always remember, I love you, but God loves you best. Kawasaki has stood for good times since the beginning. Join in on the action with a great deal on a new Kawasaki during the Good Times sales event happening now. Save up to $2,500 on select vehicles, plus get great finance offers. Kawasaki, let the good times roll. Restrictions may apply, subject to change without notice. Offer available on approved purchases of select new unregistered Kawasaki vehicles. Offer valid for a limited time only. Start your good times at Freedom Power Sports McDonough to save on a new Kawasaki.